on. Hold on. Give me a second. I didn't know I was gonna be hosting a debate panel today. Don't be doing this shit. I can't fucking I can't fucking scream and shout. It's like one thirty in the fucking morning. Alright, well you you were in the general chat, so I am taking this as you wanting to have your piece. Yeah, yeah. Your your claim your claim is that I'm a fascist. Let's hear it. Alright, 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 right. So here's the deal. Thing after thing, wasn't it? Like (laughs) Alright, hold on. I I have to change something. Before you get started, hold on, hold on. Alright, hold on. Let me just let me just get this. Okay. All right. Now I can, I have my push to talk enabled so I can pop in if it gets too spicy or whatever. Well, you been, you been, um, uh, you should do, fuck, what's it? Um, the muting? Uh, pr- uh, primary speaker? Not primary speaker, but you know what I mean. Oh, priority speaker. I always have priority speaker enabled on my display. Priority speaker. It, That's it, it's it's a dark thing, but it's necessary because if I am fucking not able to... It was on the tip of my tongue. I was like, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, I always use that shit in my, dis- uh, my Discord when I need to. One, one second. It's one of the most effective moderating tools and nobody fucking uses it, honestly. Like, priority speaker is god tier. Yeah, it's important. It's a it. If you can't, then you can lose control of your entire show, and I, I really can't afford to do that. Uh, as much as it would be nice to, uh, um, to do that. All right. So listen, let's let's hear you talk it out because uh, this is a and and I just want to make it clear. This is a different discussion. Me and Peacecraft have finished our discussion. Y'all have your own disagreement. Um, real quick, can I just get a a very quick sound test? I want to make sure that everybody can hear you both. Leroy Jenkins. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Shaka laka boom boom. Okay, this is I, good enough. All right, did go you ahead. see that? Go at it. And himself into a pickle. It was the funniest right. shit I've ever seen. All right, so I will outline my position. And Viv called me a fascist. I'm curious to hear why. According to Wikipedia, civic nationalism, also known as liberal nationalism, is a form of nationalism identified by political philosophers who believe in an inclusive form of nationalism that adheres to traditional liberal values of freedom, tolerance, equality, and individual rights. Civic nationalists often defend the value of national identity by saying that individuals need a national identity in order to lead meaningful, autonomous lives and that democratic polities need national identity in order to function properly. This is where I add my own brackets, balkanization bad. Civic nationalism is frequently contrasted contrasted with ethnic nationalism. Civic yeah, yeah. nationhood is a political nationalism. Yeah. Civic nationhood is a political identity built around shared citizenship within the state. Thus, mm-hmm. a civic nation is not def- is not defined by not language or culture, but by political institutions and liberal principles. Maybe I am de- another brackets, peacecraft brackets here. I think shared language is probably good. I think it's probably good if for just social cohesion and moving mm-hmm. about the world, but maybe that's me being radical. End brackets. Yeah, yeah. Political institutions and liberal principles which its citizens pledge to uphold. Membership in the civic nation is open to anyone who shares those values, hence legal immigration. Oh yeah, are we are we gonna have a conversation? Or are you I'm, gonna, I'm like, just I'm just a Wikipedia page for civic hold on, nationalism hold on, to me. Hold on, wait, I've got, wait, I've got... wait, wait, wait. You can't outline your fucking philosophy without referring to the page to the Wikipedia page on it. I I'm just breaking it down for people in chat who 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 said that they weren't familiar with it or had questions. Okay. I'm reading I'm well, reading I just wanna, I just two make short paragraphs and then I'm gonna hear why you believe I am a fascist, as that was your claim. Yeah, Is that sure. fair? Sure. Civic nation has a political identity built around shared citizenship within the state. Thus, a civic nation is not defined by language or culture, but by political institutions and liberal principles, which its citizens pledge to uphold. Membership in the civic nation is open to anyone who shares those values. All right? Its biggest critique comes from ethno-nationalists. Now, please, make the claim as to why I am a fascist. Well, number one, its biggest critique doesn't come from ethno-nationalists. Um, when it says it's contrasted with ethnic nationalism, what it means is that it that they are two different kinds of nationalism in that one tends to focus around an, an identity that is tied to the state and the other focuses on, on an identity that is tied to race, right? Like, <laughs> but functionally... 
when we talk about like American neo-fascism, there really isn't much of a difference. I think personally, the Proud Boys are a really fucking good example of this because the Proud Boys could loosely be described as civic nationalists, hyper patriots who don't mind having uh, Hispanic uh, or or Latin. Sorry, I'm really shit with the fucking terms for like South American people. So if I cause offense, I apologize. But Hispanic or Latinx peoples, right or black folks within their within their organization they don't mind right partially True. because they're are you are you making the like... claim that or sorry i didn't mean to cut you off but to clarify you're making the claim <laughs> you're making the claim that the proud boys are more similar to like a japanese ultra nationalist party do you see any delineation between those two groups because if you wanted like, to make the claim that i'm an ultra nationalist you might be more correct but fascist no okay so ultra nationalism uh, is focused on by both Umberto Eco and uh, Robert Paxman in their definitions of fascism. It is, in fact, one of the primary fucking things that is needed to build fascism because fascism exists as an as as That's a state supporting entity. It has to because it is authoritarian by nature and requires the de- definition of a particular in in this case a lot of the citizenry of the polity. Hope to have you again soon. Right in 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 the case of an ethno nationalist that would be like the white race, right? Which is which is upheld by the state, right? True. So, <laughs> so yeah, there is not really a particularly large fundamental difference between these two because it is rights for me and not for thee, right? I, if you are not a citizen, if you are not of my nation, then you don't you don't have the same rights as I do. You are not as human as me. That is a, I feel, a, con- a conflation. If I was, you're a Brit bonger, if I was to go to Brit bong land and perform an act or do something against your politics. Interesting. Derisive I, term for people of another nation. Oh, Interesting. sweet. It's an internet meme, my dude. Like, well, if I, just, I was, No, I just, find it, I just find it amusing that you like, went straight there. I realize it's like 90% memes, but let's be fair. We choose the memes we choose because uh, we identify with them in some way, right? All right. All right. I, I would say that I'm an Amerifat. That's old 4chan lingo. I apologize if you took offense at it. Right. I'm, I'm from Burgerland. These are all internet memes. I apologize. Right. But if I was to do those things, I would not be as privileged as you. I do not see that as morally or ethically poor if I am an outsider to your polity. Um, oh, shit. You don't you don't see why you should have the same rights as 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 other people if you are like outsiders to their to their land to their polity. No, if anything, if I was to go to I don't know if you're uh, you're British, I'm assuming, right? So if I was to go to Britain and I was to commit an infraction of any kind, I oh would no, only... no infraction. You just want to go to Britain. Okay, I, I or I've been there before, but like, have you? you? Yes. Cool. We should. We should, we definitely should have like seized you at the border, put you in a fucking cage for eight months, sat you in front of a judge where you couldn't speak the same fucking language as him without any kind of fucking representation. These are the things that we should do that you were defending because you view people outside of your nation as having less fucking rights than you do. No, I flew in on a fucking Airbus into an airport with my passport in one hand filled out all documentation per your nation's code and outline of do you know the, do you know the process and then had a for... lovely vacation it was tight cool. do you know the process for asylum you present yourself at the border and ask for asylum that's that's it that's like the universally recognized process for asylum right so essentially they followed the law just like you did and yet they have less rights than you do because what because why? They because they are not of your nation. They are not of your correct. Parent. Exactly. You're, you're right. And this is now, where, why is that? Where it tends, and this is where it tends into fascism. All 
right. Explain to me how that turns into fascism. The only functional difference between civic nationalism and ethno-nationalism, especially somebody like yourself who is actually even more extreme than the average liberal um, civic nationalist who would agree with like trans people being in the military, for example, because they are citizens and should serve, right? Uh, or who would also agree with... Model who would also agree with what was the other thing you were like you were making uh brackets about in the fucking wikipedia thing i made the claim uh, i made the, the language. language yeah sure not by language or culture yeah you 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 think we should have that unified language it um, probably makes day-to-day -day life easy like i would if i moved to china and i didn't speak mandarin or cantonese or any of the other dialects i would probably have a really bad time moving about in the world like, like more force. Force, but you wouldn't, yeah but you wouldn't like you wouldn't like enforce it on people or you wouldn't have it on enforced on you to speak chinese although maybe in a few years because some some, some nations do have, have that as a some concept. nations do have that as part of their sovereign right if you immigrate to our nation you will learn the language i don't find that as immoral or unethical a sovereign nation has set a standard of joining their polity that's it you can you can choose to do that or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I, it, it it definitely facilitates moving around in a nation if you can speak the language. It'll help you get jobs and it'll, and, it, and all that sort of stuff. I'm totally down with you there. So you uh, so you different... didn't find an issue with that claim. I just made the claim. Yeah, it's probably useful to know the language. I would probably not place it maybe an official, although I don't find fault with countries that do. I would at least place a culture, a soft cultural pressure on. Hey guys, learn the fucking language so that we can all communicate with one another. That's, That's right. probably helpful. Like, sure. Okay. Let's not get let's not get fucking bogged down in this because the language conversation is like a whole fucking like black hole that we could totally get lost in but um but yeah i mean i agree with you ultimately language is probably pretty important if you if you if you can at least communicate with people around you that's useful however the united states is a country oh, of like many on, fucking languages her. right like the united states has a huge uh hispanic population right or sorry is the term right hispanic for like people his, who his, speak his, people at least where I live, people say yeah. Hispanic. We, I don't cool. hear people say Latin. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm from no England, hot so, you know. Um, um, I think the yeah. general, um, and I could be wrong here, but um, as far as I understand it, this was how it was explained to me by my ex. Um, Hispanic means like originating from Spain, whereas Latin. I thought Hispanic um, meant like Spanish speaking. And um, like Latin. vaguely, but it's more been a, a, like yeah. it's it's more been associated with um like people whose lineage comes from like España, like Spain, um, yeah, whereas yeah. Latin was adopted as a term to include um like indigenous people who yeah. didn't have any who don't have any sourcing you know they don't have any like, okay, fair enough. Yeah, well, fair essentially, enough. what I'm saying is there's a whole bunch of fucking people that speak like uh, various South American dialects in yes. the United States, right? Which are all like relatively Correct. similar, similar, and can be put under the sort of broad definition of like I don't know, like uh, Spanish or Mexican or South American languages or whatever, you, right? So, but there's a huge fucking population of those people. Um, so there's no reason that a person can't like make it in the United States if they don't if they don't speak American. Like mm -hmm. there's there's more than enough of a community for them already. True, but it, true. And I, for instance, um, dude, I was working at work at work today is literally an illegal immigrant, literally an illegal immigrant from Mexico. He's on my work crew. I, how do you know he's illegal? He fucking told me. Told me the story of how I asked him. I'm not a, I t said, hey, man, tell me your story. And he's like, I'm an illegal immigrant. Uh, me and my dad fucking, me and my dad illegally immigrated up here. I got my green card, which is why I'm able to work here. And my brothers got caught and they were deported back to Mexico. Fucking, oh, yeah. If he got his green card, then he's not an illegal immigrant. Or, or I don't know what amnesty, but he il originally illegally immigrated to America. Straight up. Like, I mean, self I, 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 I even kind of object to not. the term illegal immigration, to be honest. But that's sure. a, that's <laughs> a political hey, Joe Lewis. Well, like, this, framework. Consider coming and joining chat. I'll give you a how cool you, name. How do you really break the rules of a nation until you're actually in that nation? Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, but like I said, I don't want to get fucking bogged down in language. Can you, can you see 
how what I'm saying, right, with regards to like holding holding your sort of like uh, your your uh, your culture, your sovereign nation, right, as being as being above that of others. It's not it's not above, but it. I is mean, it necessarily it, it necessarily it, is if you don't afford pe people who are not of of it um, the same rights that you have. Yeah, I think I figured out a, a, a point that might um, move us off the language thing. Um, do... I don't even know why we're still talking about language. No, I was fine. just mentioning um, that you... as like something that Peace you're crap. a little, he's a little harder on than the average civic nationalist, right? I wasn't even saying that it was like a particularly like terrible thing. I'm just saying it like moves in close to that. Um, the ethno nationalist. Yeah, really. here's, the, here's the thing that I think might be um, enlightening and might provide some discussion direction. Um, mm -hmm. What do you believe that there are universal human rights um uh uh peacecraft do you believe in, in that there's human rights that um that are that should be or are guaranteed to any person regardless of where they come from largely um largely i'm a naturalist in terms of rights um uh gay fesh gay fesh said he thinks might makes right and that's half meme and half Neither, not CB meme power does matter the wielding of power does matter um mm -hmm. for instance there you go fancy name joe There's yeah fancy we name. in america Check say that or at least the founder said that rights are secured for you by the government but delivered by god and while they weren't specifically religious they did that to kind of wean away from the tricky question of do you do you as an inborn person have rights they bypassed it and said God gave them to you. Don't question it. The, go the government's just here to secure them. In a in a real sense, in a real sense, um, I want to believe in a world where where uh, there are basic human rights exist. But even though Gay Fesh is going to excoriate me for making a status quo argument, we quite obviously observe that human rights are not universal. They are not universal. They are not held to a, a standard in, in between any nation state, between any region, between any group, between any culture, they are not the same. They don't exist. Right. And that sucks, but it's real. Right. Um, I know gay fesh hates it, but, um, I don't see it. I don't see it as being observable. That would be the way that I would put it. The reason that we have the certain amount of rights that we have versus Vivian maybe having health care is universal right due to her polity is because two different polities came to an agreement on two different things, right? Yeah, you guys decided not to afford the right of health care to those people who can't afford it, thus placing the lower I wasn't, making a, moral, I wasn't making a moral evaluation. I was just saying that there, what? there's a difference there. There's a difference. Well, I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just speaking, I'm just speaking to how, Thanks, like, especially the Appreciate United that. States has been like uniquely vulnerable for, to fascism for a long time, partially because of its focus on hypernationalism, you know, swearing allegiance to the flag and all that shit in your schools and so on, and just the general sort of jingoistic propaganda that's blared out on your TV screens non-fucking stop with your bold eagles, fucking Harley Davidsons, and the American flag on every fucking Fuck street corner. I but, like that word too. I say it all the time. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, so <laughs> my point, my point there was that, like, I, th I think a lot of, a lot of the kind of, like, attitude that you're espousing is one of the reasons that America is, like, so uniquely vulnerable to, like, things like Donald Trump. I'd, I'd, I'd flip it back on you. At what, what level of nationalism for you is too much? What do you mean? What level of nationalism like, is too much? What level... Like, for instance, and I'm not going to pick on the moderator, but I think... Well, I mean, you've described yourself as an ultra-nationalist, right? So I could be like... No, I was... I was and, still uh, and I was using careless... I was using careless language. Um, I'm not... Pro uh, hmm. No, I'm probably That's more nationalist than a civic nationalist. I'm not as crazy as a Japanese super ultra-nationalist or a Proud Boys ultra-nationalist. Mm -hmm. oh, and I'm definitely not a... Uh, God damn it. Uh... Uh, I'm not an ethnic nationalist. So I think uh, I think nationalism of a certain kind is is acceptable when it comes from uh, like an oppressed group trying to wheedle their way out from under the thumb of some oppressive regime, right? They want so to like, carve out space for themselves so that they can govern themselves and and afford themselves the rights that their governments don't. Um, 
But other than that, I think nationalism is by and large pretty fucking cringe. Like, um, I, I, you know, I'm an anarchist. I think ultimately we probably shouldn't even have fucking nation states, right? Although I recognize them, like I said earlier, as 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 potential sort of stop gaps uh, needed for those people who are suffering oppression in in the nations in which they live currently. I think it's just an axiomatic value difference. I recognize the importance of the state, and you wish they didn't exist. Like no, that. I mean I'm fine. I'm fine with the idea that they exist currently. Like. I, I understand that they exist currently. I'm kind of vaguely like we probably shouldn't exist, but like I I you know I always say I hate talking about like fucking utopian ideals because we're so fucking far away from them. We're probably you know our, our ideas around them will change as we as we approach them. Um, but you asked me what I thought of uh, thought of nation states, so I guess I answered right. Um, ultimate ultimately, like we live in them currently, and that's. That's just kind of the way it is. Um, but just because I'm British and somebody else is fucking Irish and somebody else is like Pakistani, I don't I don't see that as any reason to restrict their freedom of movement, to um, to incarcerate them for uh, for trying to move around. Um, I don't see that as any reason to strip them of those rights which exist within my nation for every person of my nation just simply because they came to my nation surely if they came True. to my nation we should be treating them as we treat everybody else True. my position is similar it was a it was a, it was a, to death in cages. it was a gal i think she was arguing and show mecky ellen dr k is the name dr k ringing any bells oh yeah i know she, she was on and prime and she was on prime kai's panel yes no oh is that where i've seen you before did you get I think we. I think we did. Get into this shit through man. politics. Did you get into this shit through politics, Blue? No, uh, politics is my hobby. I think it's the greatest game ever made that plays for. No, I mean, people. did you get into this shit through the politics Discord server? Like, no, no, I you? followed. I followed Demon Mama before I ever went to Prime Kai. Okay. True. Um, but uh, God, where was I going with this? No, uh, Doctor K's statement is that state sovereignty is important. Right, like, unless you're going to either impose oh, yeah, a soft okay, the fucking imperialism. So I grant other states if if Norway decides that in order to come to Norway you gotta walk backwards in a tutu and sing the Carolina Hudson camera song or whatever, then okay, like they can do that. They are sovereign. I recognize their diversity. I recognize their personhood. I recognize their agency and decision making. They can make that choice. Right, I think. Okay, it is, and I if, think you, and if you want to come to America, if you want to come to America, you have to, uh, as a refugee, present yourself at the border and apply for asylum, and then we will incarcerate, starve, and abuse you. Is there any? Is there any current on the rule book? Is there anything on the current rule books? And I'm not using this as a weasel word. If somebody present, do you know that if somebody presents themselves to an asylum? What is then after that? Are they given a date? Are they are they told what is the next step in the chain from that? Well, they're incarcerated until such a time as a court hearing can be scheduled for them. Um, meanwhile, there's like investigations that go on with them. Uh, I forget who takes care of the fucking investigations. It'll be ICE or Border Patrol or somebody like that, right? Um, but yeah, uh, so they have the they have the investigations and. Yeah, when when they get a court date scheduled, uh, if they're lucky enough to get a court date scheduled before right. they die. And keep in mind well, that we... Donald Trump did um, end what was called uh, "quote unquote" catch and release, which is a, a mm. sort of terrible euphemism for. Um, yeah, they this used process. to let them. They used to let them just. Yeah, like you would be able to go, go and... live your normal life, and you would be issued a yeah. a. Um, a date a date to appear in court and as it turns out that was actually very it was a very effective policy but donald trump didn't like mm. it again on ideological grounds not on functional grounds. only the low iq ones come back yeah. right yeah low that was his statement the other night but yeah the punch back on and now they're trying to and now they're trying to make it legal uh to just deport them without any kind of um any kind of court date or anything 
no no legal process and the legal process that they underwent uh, as i was trying to enunciate yeah, earlier true, is fucking true. garbage it literally led to like toddler aged children sitting in front of a judge alone with fuck all representation with a shit translator using fucking google translate on their phone to try and get across what's being said right like well, we know we know we know that and we can define it as a Billion, small amount um, or a large oh, but in an amount because we have a site chat where my community hangs out have been trapped. that's basically why their their traffickers have been arrested out. and we've got a fucking kid we've got a kid oh, sitting in a chair some kids, some kids some kids get trafficked across the border okay. nobody okay. fucking nobody fucking denies that okay however the united states recently just lost over 200 of these children's fucking parents right before they even completed any kind of investigation to d to decide whether or not these people were traffickers their parents were deported hmm. without them i don't know a billion and they are now being placed in foster families in the united states in this the is article, the and i referenced that with demon mama when they called those parents back and said we got your kid my bad joe when, I when, said over 200. Um, 500 is over 200. Like, technically hey. correct. <laughs> when they called those parents back and was like, we got your kid. They're like, no, they couldn't get kid. hold of them, you keep fucking keep idiot. They couldn't find that them. Was what a, are you that talking was about? They called the parents back. When they, when they got a hold of a number of they those parents. They couldn't find them because they deported them to fuck knows where and then lost the records. God, Google this one. They didn't do anything until there was a literal injunction and then they claimed to have lost the records. Yeah. No, this is from the current DHS chief, Chad Wolf, who is neither a Chad nor a Wolf. Uh, his claim from the current acting head of the okay. DHS. Thanks, I'll try to help you if you is, can. Uh, We're trying to, do, do, there's do, some do, bugs. Do, 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 the same DHS that was tweeting about the lying fake news media the other day. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to find. Ah, it's just oh, for sure. Fine, don't for you think? Sure. This has been wild. Out of the 545 that you and Joe claimed, currently, and we're quibbling over we're we're quibbling over numbers. When I agree with you that this is an important thing, I have never fucking made the claim that having a fucking lone child sitting on the border is a good thing. I do not believe that that is good. Right? That is that is not acceptable. Right? But I contrast that with the fact that our, the, pol the government of our polity, I do not feel is immoral or unethical to make, to hold under high scrutiny any individual who makes a claim towards that government or polity. I don't see as being fucking thorough and doing your due diligence as a bad thing. Men, I like the optics. I agree with you that it's fucking messy. I even agree with you that Trump might be doing it as part of a fucking display, 100 fucking percent. But the mechanism of doing due diligence, I don't find incorrect, right? Sorry, what, no, the, the idea that we need to do, quote unquote, due diligence to make sure that children are not being trafficked, I, I understand that. I don't want fucking children trafficked either. All right. The the idea that we should also try and make sure that we're Chad you Wolf. know we're not letting in oh. like notorious criminals or fucking gang or gang leaders, right? People who might be seeking to do harm or commit uh, other criminal activities within U.S. borders. Also, absolutely, investigations totally need to be done. Absolutely, none of these investigations necessitate a child being left in a cold fucking cell with a shitload of other children with only fucking uh, tinfoil, you know, fucking blankets, no toothpaste, frozen ready meals to eat, and being sprayed regularly with fucking chemicals that, like, irritate and burn their skin. It doesn't necessitate children dying in fucking cages, dude. It, lit it just doesn't. And as for your arguments earlier about how fucking many there are of them it was 69,550 back in um back in 2019 i imagine the number has probably gone up a little fuck knows right because they have such a backlog of cases and they don't really get to them very quickly but the united states prison system right has two and a half million people incarcerated right now it has over seven million people in the judicial system right 
people who are awaiting court dates, who are in jail, who are in, you know, what, fucking wherever, on probation, right? Seven fucking million. 69,000 children. 70,000 children. Whatever it is now. It's nothing. It's a fucking drop in the ocean. The cost of them all having toothpaste doesn't come close to covering what it takes for Trump to take a golf trip. Okay. Right? What my like, claim, my claim is that the logistics are still difficult. Let's say we took everybody in that camp, all sixty. You said sixty-nine. Well, what you do is you take you you take ice, right, and you fucking rip it to pieces. You get rid of it because there's far too many fucking Nazis in it. Because we expose a new one every fucking week. All right. You take ice, get fucking rid of it. Take border patrol, border patrol, get fucking rid of it. Set up a judiciary system that actually gives a fuck about people. Get translators, right? Get proper fucking investigators. You could set up a new investigative agency. I don't even give a shit. But, like, fundamentally, the system needs to be overhauled because it's filled with people who are, like, full-on fucking nationalists, right? They don't give a shit about these people. They are out to hurt and fucking abuse them. Holy shit, that's And that's why let records get lost. That's why people end up getting hysterectomies that they don't fucking need. That's why children end up dying in fucking cages. That's why people end up sure. getting deported with basically We've no fucking actual reason for why they're being deported. Because they can't even speak the language of the court, uh, uh, that the court is speaking that they go to. Right? Well, None of this, are, we're talking about due more. diligence. None of this screams due diligence to me. Like, none of us have been able to dial down, and I asked Demon this, and, and the chat is filling me on it too. What is the acceptable reasons for being a refugee? What are the acceptable reasons? Well, currently, the definition of a refugee is somebody whose life is at risk if they return to their place of origin, right? Which does actually contrary to what you were saying earlier include economic migrants is, is there any place that we can find that we can google and find the standard it seems Sorry. like this would be googleable well i mean <laughs> googleable for who for the 69,000 children who are still in cages awaiting trials to find out why they're there we don't have those stats because we haven't found out why they're there <laughs> But <laughs> what has that got to do with fucking anything? I don't. I, I honestly don't understand because. Well, I, I think another way we can people... go with this too is um like it, regardless of the the exact details of what each uh, migrant or or refugee um, in our country may be. That's that's a different question. I think what is the um in 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 you know to sort of give us another direction to go in with this where we can you know maybe again drill down um, well, it's still silly demon mama it's like even if they're if they're here just because like they were earning five five dollars an hour in their home country and they want to come and learn uh, earn seven dollars an hour that still doesn't necessitate locking them in a fucking cage oh, I, for eight months for the record i, I agree shit. with you on that particular part but what i'm saying is if we're trying to get to the bottom of um of what like of what peacecraft's views are and at whether you you know whether we think whether the chat thinks that this aligns with fascism or not here's where i think we can we can talk about this which is um you know peacecraft has stated already in this conversation that uh and i may be miss miss you know correct me if i'm wrong but that you basically support the tools the country having the tools to be able to make whatever um designation that it wants to um in order to determine um citizenship or whatever right okay so if that's the case then did was like is is like nazi germany declaring that the jews are no longer citizens and can be detained is that just under your framework this is a this is such a godwin's and we do not well, no i'm just asking because ago. like here's the thing if no, that's yeah, the i case, mean it's not like you want to you want to talk about godwin's though you've got you've got a literal neo-nazi death cult infiltrating the gop as we speak like you, you you're you're holding people in concentration camps at the border you're whisking them away in fucking uh unmarked vehicles your political opponents like in unmarked vehicles to fucking black sites nobody knows where they fucking went right like you you're you're very much living in the beginning of this shit 
every every single fucking extremist researcher and expert that I know is extremely nervous right now. Very nervous right now. From people like fucking, uh, from people like Robert Paxton, who I exchanged emails with not so long ago, who literally wrote the fucking book on fascism, the anatomy of fascism, if you want to go read it. Um, to to like you know fucking reporters on the ground and shit like you you were going through the um uh the Twitter feed earlier and you saw uh, um ah, fuck I write okay Robert Evans uh and others who are on the ground right now right um to to people who spend all fucking day like tippy tapping on their computers and going through Telegram chats and shit right the air is the air is there right we already have um what Paxton described as as the mass-based uh, nationalist militants working in uneasy but effective cooperation with traditional elites, right? We already have that in those in those Trumpist militias. We already have that in the in the poll watchers, in the oath keepers, in the three percenters, right? Uh, even in the Proud Boys, um, the, all the fucking signs are there. And I, I and I think people who people who say that we're being hysterical, when you uh, back in the United, uh, sorry, back in Japan, I know you like that Japanese nationalism, right? So you must have heard of fucking Orm Shinrikyo. So Orm I mean, Shinrikyo. the crazy people that fucking sarin gas the subway. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was those guys when they ran, and they were very, very similar to QAnon. They were a millenarianist death cult. Um, they were focused on ideas around anti-Semitism and, and essentially repackaged blood libel. There was a whole load of like weird Hindu um, and, and Buddhist shit chucked in there as well. And the guy who ran it declared himself to be the, the, the reborn Christ. But apart from that, right, they ran for government. Okay. None of them got in. They ran, they, I think they ran like 20 something fucking candidates uh, and not a single one was elected to government. And now we have 80 plus uh, former or current congressional candidates who identify with QAnon, who are QAnon supporters, and, and several of which are likely to be in office come November. And, and QAnon at its heart is a neo-Nazi death cult. So, I, yeah. I, dis I, I disavow QAnon. I'm not, I, don't, I don't care if you disavow QAnon. The point was that you said that we were being fucking hysterical and going all Godwin's law on the situation. And I'm pointing out to you the different ways in which we are rapidly, rapidly moving towards some kind of hyper-nationalist democide, right? All right. Uh, all right. No, I do not think it's good that QAnon members are being elected even though they are on the right side of the fence. I do not think that that is good. The I did right not fight of the fence. The okay. the only the only parallel I have is a local one where we have a trial. No, I just I, I just want you to clarify what you mean by the phrase the right side on the fence. I don't I, I don't want people to you know, go out of context and say Repub that you support like the the not the right as in being morally right the political right the Republican mm -hmm. QAnon that version of fucking shit. I am not okay. with. But thank you for reaching for the clarification. Cool, good. Trump has embraced it. Um, Don Jr. has embraced it. Ted Cruz has embraced it. Fucking uh, Giuliani, who presented us with the Hunter Biden fucking laptop, was on uh, was on Fox News talking about how Hunter Biden was like fucking underage girls on the laptop, right? Which is like an unsubstantiated claim. Really fucking weird that he hasn't released that footage. We've seen Hunter Biden getting a foot job at this point, so if he was fucking underage girls, I can't help but think it would have been released. So he's been playing into those fucking narratives too. In fact, most of the Hunter Biden shit is very, very QAnon-y. Um, so, like, you've got an administration that, for some reason, you seem to fucking support that uh, that is literally embracing and pushing this neo-Nazi death cult that you say you don't you don't support. I'm reading. I'm just. I'm not fact checking you to fact check you. I'm reading to read this. Apparently, Don Jr. posted an American flag with "Who's ready for the Trump rally tonight?" with the letter Q. The, oh, the yeah, no, that was fucking. That was fucking years ago. No, uh, just, was, Don Jr. Say. has been on. Don Jr. Don Jr. has been on several fucking unhinged rants, making accusations of Satanism and pedophilia towards the Democrats. 
I don't have a I don't have a Twitter. I don't fucking he's been he's been playing to the QAnon folks for for a little while now, especially since his father mentioned them in the debates. He's he's had quite a few. Glenn Greenwald rants. lied. So here's the que here's a question that I think can move us forward from this point. Um, what is the functional difference between a civic nationalist society and a fascistic society? If under a civic nas nationalist society, a fascistic border solution or fascistic immigration solution would be acceptable. Because we're trying to get to the bottom. I mean, the whole reason why y'all came on to fight was about whether these views are close enough to fascism to call them fascism. But basically, well, they, they facilitate the they facilitate the creation of a fascist state. Yeah, which is which is enough for me to say that somebody is promoting fascism. And is Vivian therefore... is making the claim that civic nationalism is the Charmander to the fascist Charizard. What? Well, no, I mean, I'm not saying it's like devolved. I'm saying it's like just it it focuses on slightly different things, but ultimately they tend to come together, just like Proud Boys and Nazis march together. Well, Peacecraft, like, here's a, here's a question I can follow up on this. Um, like, so we, we you, like, you'd agree, like, something like, like, I mean, and then again, not to do, like, um, Godwin's Law, but we're talking about fascism here. So, like, something like the Holocaust is a terrible thing, right? I, I assume you would agree with that. But, um, under, I mean, I have yet to hear, like, how a civic nationalist society would prevent that or not allow that sort of thing from happening. It sounds like, under the, the system that you've promoted so far, that you would also be willing to say, like, or stand in defense of something along those lines, provided that it was, you know, within the established borders of a country. So I really um, wonder, then, I'm, what is the I'm difference? When he suddenly decides that a group of people aren't citizens. No, the fascist state is the primacy is the state and the right of self-determination is not there. Secondarily, fascism is also outward expanding to where a fascist state will not recognize the sovereign rights of other nations. It have, a it civic, have to be. A it, civic it, national, it tends to be, but it doesn't have to be. Or then it tends to be versus a civic nationalist is almost exclusionary. Like, no, you like we're going to make it hard for you to join us. But once you join us, you're good. Like, that is the difference. One is inward focusing, the other one is outward focusing. And that would be a really hyper general way to put it. I mean, no, I mean, fascism is generally characterized by some sort of like want to go back to some kind of homogenous society in which, uh, you know, in which. Uh, the people who promote it can be recognized as a particular kind of in-group and the state looks after their interests like that's that's essentially that's essentially how fascism works because the, it's like you, you are the in-group you, you are the chosen people um yeah and the state is made up made up of you and for you the and difference for the you. difference also is civic nationalism absolutely determines that leaders can be chosen by the will of the people provided they are citizens versus fascists tend to be much more authoritarian in their delineation and direction of power. I'm not for authoritarianism. I'm not a big fan of it, especially when it's directed in towards your own polity. Like there are clear delineations between civic nationalism and fascism. Is that a fair point? Do you disagree? I I do disagree. I think I think the fundamentals of the ideology, the building blocks, are like are basically the same. Um, when you talk about like how, <laughs> yeah, not that's, all that's kind of a weak argument because you like well all all cars are the same because they have motors, wheels, and tires. Like, well, yeah. I mean, if I was to call if I was to call them all vehicles, then I then I'd be then I'd be right, wouldn't I? Well, here's the thing, and here's where I would, uh, to sort of clarify this this angle of, of approach, like, earlier, uh, Peacecraft, you'd said that, um, like, you were fine if, like, the requirements for a country um, to allow someone to immigrate was that you had to be, um, like, walk backwards in a tutu or whatever, like, so then if that sort of, like, that sort of liberty is given to the, the idea of citizenship— um, outside of just might makes right, saying like, well, they can do it, and therefore it's okay if they do. What's to say that like a w would not a valid civ civic nationalist society potentially also be an ethno state? 
Because, like, they could also say, like, you, you could say that, well, the only way you get in here, the only way we allow you any citizenship, how we grant you citizenship is you're white. Like, is that, would that, like, what would prevent or what, what in your viewpoint, would that negate that as a civic national society or is that a valid civic national society? It, what it sounds it to become, me is like, right? I mean, and we're splitting hairs here, but then it would become an ethno nationalist state. It would no longer be. I'm now, glad you agree that we have has when it becomes a civic and ethnic nationalism. It would, it would no longer be a civic nationalist state if it became an old, if it became, or God, knows. first of all, pause, let me put in a dip. What the fuck does put in a dip mean? I'm confused. Uh, yeah, you guys don't have chewing tobacco in Britbong stand, do you? When I was in Ireland, they'd never seen it. They thought I was a fucking redneck. Um, they don't heard about it. it. No, the, the delineation is the delineation demon. If a civic nationalist state then becomes an ethno-nationalist state, it quits being one. Well, does it, though? But because, like, it, what if the civic nationalist state... Um, what if the civic nationalist state just says, like, well, our, one of our, you know, re like, one of the things we determine for access is skin color or you can you know step one back and so okay maybe they don't do skin color but they do like language or um culture yeah culture quote unquote Okunawaji is pretty pretty on the nose a democratic republic with a super strict constitution yeah it's pretty tight big fan um no i think that i think that civic nationalism is the opposite to an ethno-nationalist state because there's no fucking guarantee that the ethno-nationalist state will act moral or ethically or in the best interest of its policy but having a standard of citizenship having the bar of what it is anybody can approach that bar pass this test no, you so are i remember now that point where you said you weren't authoritarian but yeah that bar for citizenship military service no, that's only in the fucking movie. The mo even Paul Verhoeven did not even read the fucking book before he made the movie. Wait, sorry, are we? Are you basing your entire ideology of Starship Troopers? I wasn't even talking about a book then. No, no, but that is the most that is the most parodied version of civic nationalism that exists. That's where a lot of people then go to the meme. Oh, you watch Starship Troopers a bunch. Even though the character of Radjax, I literally crazy. have not mentioned Starship Troopers once. You are the no person people. People in chat, people in chat reference it all the time when I bring up civic nationalism. I apologize. Cool. So you're not for conscription. You're not for mandatory military service or mandatory civil service. I personally, personally, are you ready to do your part? I personally <laughs> believe that some level of mandatory, either military service. It's military service in the movie, but if it was fucking cleaning up parks, or if it was fucking, or civic works, or the Peace Corps, or something, some level of something, I would not have a problem with. And that's, re and that's required for citizenship. Some form of uh, civic service. Some, some form of uh, state job. Yes, I would not have a problem with that. Must be in the employ of the state. It's pretty Sim authoritarian, buddy. Sim similar to South Korea doing it, even though theirs is mandatory. Sure, and South Korea was like quasi fucking fascist, like after the war. But uh, in civic, still it, arguably is in a lot of ways. But it, in civic nationalism, it's not forced. It's not forced under that mechanism. You say, no, I mean, if it's you not forced. You just want not a citizen and don't have any rights if you don't do it. No, 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 no. The, the okay. only difference, the question, only difference in that particular framework of civic nationalism was the right to vote. They had they shared the same laws, they shared the same things. The only difference was the right to vote. And the right to vote, the right to influence the polity came after service to the polity. That was it. And it wasn't strictly military service in the book or any other document. It was fucking cleaning up parks or volunteering your time at old people's homes. It was it was literally service of any kind for mm -hmm. a number of years and then you got to vote. Okay. I I mean that's still pretty authoritarian dude. It it's it's not very unliberal. authoritarianism is mandated. It's it's not mandated. They're giving you the option. You can do Wait, this no, or you can look, not if I give you the option to like to like fuck off out of my face or I'll shoot you, that's not much of an option, is it? 
like I know this. If, I, if I say if I say you must you must work in service to the state or you will not be considered a citizen and not have the same rights as everybody else, this is not a choice. In this hypothetical framework that will never exist, but that I like, there in the difference. Well, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I don't care whether it will ever exist or not, right? Personally, I think it probably could exist, especially in America right now with the way things are going. But the point is, this is your ideology. This is what <laughs> Fair, you Max. want. So stop trying to be like, uh, dismiss it like, oh, it's not important. It'll never happen. Like, just fucking own it, dude. There is an authoritarianism is a mandate from the state. In cool. under this under this system, individuals that choose not to make this choice, the only difference that they have is that they can't vote. They are not brutalized. They can fuck it. They have families. They go to work. They participate in all other aspects of life. The only difference. So wait, you want to remove the vote from people who don't work with the state? How the fuck is that not authoritarian? How the fuck is like disenfranchising people who do, who won't do as you as they're told? Like, how the fuck is that not authoritarian? I think there is a moral good. I think there is a moral good, a Kantian moral good, in service to the polity oh, yeah. before you direct the direction of the polity. That is my philosophical statement. Is this Kant the same Kant that thought like? black uh, black people were white when they were born and like grew black out of their belly buttons i have no idea about <laughs> i mean i just you know kantian philosophy my dude like <sighs> well i mean my question so is that, that is like moral, you think, i i i agree with you that there is a there is a moral good towards like uh helping out your community because right? this is good to work it's through. It's just that you lawsuit. seem to equate community with this state. This is good to discuss these things. Which is which is where the difference comes in it being authoritarian versus like state serving is to... The largest, state is the largest community. Like ripples... No, it's, not, it's a tiny fucking community. Your community. Your what the fuck are you talking about? It is the it's largest... Really... It is the outside boundary of the community. If you go from your house to your neighborhood to your town, to your county, to your state, and then the nation. It's the largest boundary of what is a loose community. I feel pretty firm making that statement. What about, Wait, uh, like, you, humanity you, or sentience? Are you, just or something? Meaning, are you just meaning nation? Yes, I think Polar beats me up on that one. I use the word nation-state, but he'd prefer if I just used either nation or state. I forget which one. If I'm conflating the term or using the wrong term, I apologize. But oh, nation-state nation state like when i say when i say state right i mean in in service to the government right in service to those oh, to those um government institutions there's a dab right like you have to work for them or else you get no you get no say you get no say in 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 how you how you are treated within the borders of the realm that they control You this would, is essentially the system that you're proposing, right? You, the only difference was in this system is you lose the right to vote unless you perform some level of service to the state first. Yeah, and I, I mean, that is, that's by definition pretty fucking authoritarian. Disenfranchising people is authoritarian. I don't well, see it see, as a... I don't see it as how a... How is it not authoritarian? Wait, I, wait, it is not a top-down mandate. Wait, so hold on what a second. Mean it's not a top down mandate. Um, they, they live within your fucking borders. Maybe right? the way that we get to the bottom of this rules. is by determining what we consider like a, a working definition of authoritarian. Do you want to both take a shot at that? Sorry, what was that question? Uh, do you want to both take a shot at like making a working definition of authoritarianism? Or what um, is authoritarian? Because it sounds like there's differing definitions. And I, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like it's a, that would be important to work out. Well, sure. I mean, authoritarianism is the is the opposition of democracy, right? Authoritarianism is the removal of people's ability to have a say in how they live and how they are treated in the and the um, the society and institutions uh, which govern them. Like that's is the yeah, definitionally fucking. Uh, 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 diametrically opposed to each other democracy um authoritarianism 
I view it authoritarianism are pro God, I can't fucking talk today. Proscriptive statements to your populace. You will do this thing. You will show up to this point. This is what you will do. It is a top-down mandate. Right. And you have no say in these rules which govern you. Correct. Much love. Right. And Thank so, you, authoritarianism is the elimination of the de of, of democratic, uh, of having a democratic say in the rules by which you are governed. In this in this example, that is the political framework I've liked. Everybody approaches this with agency and cogency and knows the score. In this hypothetical world where President Peacecraft is the president of civic nationalism, yeah, where are Yamoka? I'll put you in a camp. No, no. It you, just, you have just the choice. This point is that I'm arguing is that you, the individual would know, hey, when you turn 18 or whatever, you're going to be given a choice. You could yeah. join the military or do civic works or the Peace Corps or some level of service. And if you do that, you will be enfranchised and have the right to vote through demonstration of good service to the people around you. If you choose not to do this thing, we're not going to harm you, but then you don't get to bitch about not voting. Like, you don't get to bitch about Why? not voting. Why? They live within the borders. They're subject to the society. They're subject to the rules. Similar to similar in the same border. vein that I tell people who don't vote in our current How is this? How wait, 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 wait. Let's just Let's just stick on whether it's authoritarian or not, right? Before you start justifying how moral it is, right? So how is it not authoritarian? Hmm. Because you said authoritarianism is, is, a, is a government telling people what they can and can't do without them having any say in it, right? Which is essentially the position that you put these people in, right? If they cannot or have significant differences with those institutions right do you have if they cannot work or if they have significant differences with those institutions um then they never get a say do you have, the issue with it have if there's it. no age limit if you can make this choice free at any time sure but they don't want to let's they view these they view these uh institutions as corrupt uh Therefore, they never get a vote. And what if those what if those organizations actually are corrupt? That's an even worse situation. Then you have a whole load of like conscientious objectors who have no fucking say in how oh, the system is run. Shaheed, so we're those systems back on can that. We become got on a little debate, incredibly fucking corrupt because anybody who doesn't work within them doesn't get any kind of fucking say in how they're run. Even though those systems are, you know, essentially social services uh, and, and uh, military, uh, paramilitary, uh, government jobs, legislature, you know, all that shit that directly affects them and how they live their lives. This is, I, I, it's really confusing to me how you don't understand that this is authoritarian to deny somebody the right to choose how they are governed. To answer the questions, um, if somebody has a disability, find anything. We'll find anything for you to do service for in this hypothetical framework. If anybody makes that choice, we will find something. It'll be hard, but it will not be fucking degraded. <laughs> okay. Just to answer the people that are fucking bringing that statement. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll force disabled people to work, or they don't get any kind of democratic say. It's good. To, uh, it's I'm not. Sure, I'm, sure it's not, not I'm sure that will not disenfranchise disabled disabled people at an alarmingly disproportionate rate. Is know? is is the only way that something can be mandated to be like verbally mandated, or can things be mandated, um, sort of by like implicitly, like for example, um. Like, I would argue that, like, um, or I could argue, for example, that, like, um, withholding someone's right to vote um, until they do something in service of a state is functionally ma a mandate. It is functionally a mandate. It's saying you don't get to participate in the society that you grew up a part of until you do this thing for us. And even though that isn't saying, that isn't, it isn't technically forcing you, it is still a form of a mandate, right? I guess it depends in this framework. It depends on how much people know the score. Like, how much do people 
know this is a thing that at any point you can make the choice. You can make the choice to undergo this trial in order to do this thing. Take off your yarmulke. Yeah, right? Like, could Prior you... allegiance to the National Socialist Party. Quit using, quit using ethnic nationalist or some, like, crypto-religio-fascist fucking nationalism as an argument against what I'm saying. I'm saying, I mean, this is, this in, is my, in my hypothetical framework <laughs> that I'm being grilled on, I don't care if you are in a wheelchair the with the use of one arm. I don't care. As long as you are competent enough to read the words on the page and sign your name, we will find something for you to do in order to fucking to undergo this service in order to earn that right. And the only way that you can fail it is, again, if you quit. What if you just don't want to? Then you live your life and you become like the 70% disaffected voters of America who don't vote. They already don't vote. They all have the option to vote. But they don't exercise that agency. How is that so different than somebody saying... Hey, we, we know you're not gonna we know you don't exercise that agency like all I mean that's their, that's the their right not to exercise that <laughs> agency. But question. they have that agency. Good and question. if they and if they have problems with the way that they are being governed, we're trying to there determine that right now, Hunter Cruz. For them to air their grievances. if 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 you deny them the right to vote, then there is no avenue for that. And institutions can become as corrupt and authoritarian as they want. Because the only people who are allowed to have any say are those people who work for the state, who swear allegiance to it. I also wonder what the difference between saying, um, like, like holding um, the right, like, enfranchisement, the right to a vote behind, um, like, behind service, how that is much different than saying, like, um, you know, take off the yarmulke, so to say. Like, like, how is that really different? It's saying the state is imposing something on you that you may or may not want um, mm -hmm. in, in exchange for something else. In this case, you know, we're just sort of swapping. The, the, the concern here, I guess, is that, you know, the, this debate originally started to determine the difference between civic nationalism and fascism. And yeah. I don't really, like, so far, I don't know. Like, on a lot of these things, it doesn't seem like there's that much of a difference, right? Like, I mean... The only, civic, the civic only nationalism really is not is not racist based. It's not fucking. It's not religious. Well, based. Fascism isn't always racially based. It just tends to be. Um, we, I it explained this at the, the, right? at, at the beginning of the conversation, right? That you can have fascism that is based on nationality, that is based on, yeah, allegiance to a state rather than the race. I right. guess I'm seeing that as muddled terms. I think I think that at least if even if there's a sliver of the delineation, the delineation matters. So then, would you be not, okay with? I mean, fascist... ulti ultimately, any any sort of civic nationalist country is going to operate on on a somewhat racist framework anyway, right? Because people outside of its borders won't have the same, you know, won't be considered of the same value as people who are within its borders, right? So it still operates in a in a in a in a kind of racist fashion, but even if you were to like ignore that entirely and just say, well, no, we 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 have no we have no problems with anybody you know who's any different kind of like skin color or whatever, you can still create a fascist state that is based around a cultural identity that is based around yeah service to the state. Um, I. <sighs> I see that. I shouldn't say similarly, but we already have that. We already have that as far as the standards by which we accept any immigrant into becoming a citizen of the polity, right? We we can set standards for income. We set standards for education level. We set standards for a bunch of things in order to join the polity. And again, I don't see those as immoral. Just uh, as another nation might have higher restrictions, another nation so might you wanna, have... You, you want to you wanna create the Lebensborn? I see. No, because <laughs> Levin's wrong with you. Don't meet your standards. I'm not an expansionist. Society. I'm not an expansionist. Oh, no, 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 no. I said Liebensborn, not Liebenswam. You, oh, you're you're mixing apologize. up your terms there. And I, I'm not familiar with that one. Can you explain that one for me, please? Uh, sure, yeah, whatever. You want to create, uh, you want to create like the Aryan Volk, essentially. You want to create the, uh, the people that are, you know, good enough for your society are the people that are part of your society and the people who aren't good enough can't be. And I right do, back. by I'm the way, the see, uh, see the questions in 
Oh. I what what's going on? I can't oh, hear Dean. I was just about to I was just telling Chad I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick, so I uh, be on good right. behavior. I just need to use the restroom real quick. Be good. <laughs> uh, 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 anyway. <laughs> Go wild. <laughs> no, I don't see it. I don't um, see it. As I do more... see the. I do see the questions in chat about the um, disability thing. Uh, I, I, I would press him on like what kind of job he would find for those people who have various, um, uh, various kinds of disability that make it incredibly difficult for them to work. But I feel that his reply, no matter what situation you are in, would be. Uh, we will find you something. There will be something that you can do. That's I. I that's why I'm not pushing him on True. like specific. And I'm pretty consistent. I'm consistent on that point. Like, and this is an ableist argument, but or maybe it is, and maybe I'm not qualified or classified to speak on it. Like, there's a there's a wide majority of individuals with disabilities that have like really fulfilling lives that go on to work and do a lot of shit. And that maybe that's not all of them, but like. Mm -hmm. I've worked with disabled individuals at my job when I was, when I was younger. And some of them we've had individuals with down syndrome. We've had individuals and like, I oh, feel, well, I feel like it's, pretty, I, I don't want to say it's shitty because I know that there's individuals out there that are really welcome. That welcome way. to survivorship bias. You saw some people who were disabled. I'm trying to, I'm trying to classify. I'm trying to classify. I'm aware that there are people out there in a super bad way, but like, there are also individuals that are disabled that are fucking super fucking kick ass, and they're awesome, and they fucking make it happen. <laughs> yeah, nobody, I, nobody's arguing that disabled people can't can't be awesome and work, right? I'm just saying that like disabled people are extraordinarily varied in 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 their in their conditions and so on. And, and it's and uh, Mitner thirty six. I'm not. For, it's not. For, when you volunteer for something, when you say, my name is Mitnerd36 and I will do this thing in order to achieve this goal, like, that is, that's not you fair, this that's isn't, you this utilizing isn't, agency. Let's be fair, this isn't, this isn't volunteering. This is, this is coercion. Ugh. I've returned. Mm, I don't know about that. I'm going to take away your right to vote unless you give me $10. I'm going to do it right now. No right to vote for you unless you give me ten dollars. It's your choice not to give me that ten dollars. There is no coercion here. It's coercion, isn't it? But can we just be fucking open and honest about that? I don't view a standard. Like, yeah, this is some, this is some weird fucking ANCAP fucking like freedom of association thing, like. You you choose to enter into a contract with McDonald's Supercorp in their private fucking paramilitary so that you can not be shot by fucking Walmart. Like, this well, who else is going to manage the McNukes, Wolf? Sorry? Do you ever think about that? Who's going to manage the McNukes? Who's going to manage the McNukes? No, McDonald's I don't. I don't view it as coercion. I don't view a barrier, a barrier that you enter in with full agency, full cogency, knowing what the standard is, knowing what the conditions are, I do not view that as Okay, I think I think I think I might have identified where we have like a fundamental kind of like axiomatic disagreement. I think I think that it ought to be everybody's right to at least have some form of say in how they are governed, right? That's my that's my belief. I think everybody ought to be able to ought to be able to raise grievances with those who govern them, and uh, petition for change, and the vote is a means of doing that. Right on the sort of mass scale, because we live in a society. Joker meme, lol, lol, lol. There's fucking millions upon millions of people in a nation, and we have centralized government and so on. So the vote. The vote, as it works at the moment, is is a way of sort of trying vaguely to do that, whilst also trying to disenfranchise as many people as possible. <laughs> but <laughs> fuck, I just I went off on a tangent. It essentially, I think our fundamental disagreement is that I think that people should have a right to have a say in how they are governed, and you seem to think that having a say in how you are governed is a privilege that you earn through service to those who govern you. 
is a privilege, even in America, where it's a, the right of being born. You have that right over non-citizens. It is. No, it, it's it not, is, it's not is it okay. Great, being born great, isn't the thing that you. Sure being born isn't the thing that you do it. to earn it. Okay, like you, you seem to think that you need to engage in actions, right? In actions of loyalty and and deference to the state in order to be able to have the right to say, I don't agree with how you are governing me. Yes. I believe, and if I, if I was, if I had the infinity gauntlet and I could set up a country that moral and ethical and good service to the polity would then grant you voting rights in that polity. I know okay. this will be you are, that you are, you are definitionally, okay, authoritarian. I disagree that it this is, is an authoritarian policy. I, Just like I, you don't know the definition of fascist, you don't know the definition of authoritarian. And when I say that you are pu you are pushing a fascistic ideology, right? Like, and you come back to me and you're like, I'm not a fucking fascist, okay? I don't I don't actually think you're lying. I said it in chat earlier. I don't think you're deliberately fucking lying. Yeah. I think you just don't know what these terms mean and you haven't really thought about it an awful lot. That's possible. I do not know everything and you could be right. I I disagree that I am a fascist. I, 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 no, I I'm kind of at a loss to how, to how to demonstrate further that this policy that you propose is authoritarian that disenfranchising people, ruling over them without their consent, right? Like, even even you described it. You said it is a top-down order that you must do things, right, without you having any kind of say in it. Like, you, you said those words. You gave that definition for authoritarianism, and yet somehow I can't... There's, there's like, this fucking wall I here. So we can't, you can't agree, you can't agree that this thing is that thing. I view our disagreement as a similar disagreement to the difference between positive and negative liberty, which some people disagree on and or confuse. I do not view it as author conditional yes, authoritarian no. Positive and negative rights. You mean, you mean as in, like, the difference between you having the right to go and do something and then you having the right to not have something done to you? Correct. Right. So how does this fit in? Uh, be I do not view it as authoritarian because it is not a you will do this thing mandate. It, if it is authoritarian, it is this is a choice you can make. You might be able okay. to label then this coercion. Is the fundamental I, difference. That it is, that I do not grant that it is authoritarian. Beyond, beyond race and religion... What is the fundamental difference between that and saying take off the Yamanka and swear and swear allegiance to the National Socialist Party, or you do not have the rights of anybody else in this country? What's what is the difference between your system and that system? Beyond Be race and religion. Because of the fact that civil nationalism in the paragraph that I broke down is yeah. based off fundamental liberal values. Discrimination against religion is probably not a liberal value. No, that's cool. We're talking about authoritarianism here, right? We agree that one is authoritarian, right? The one where you say, take off your take off your yamuka, swear allegiance to the National Socialist Party, okay? And then you can and then you can like vote for who's the Chancellor next year, right? And and you saying, uh, come and work for our institutions, give your labor and time in deference to the state, otherwise you cannot vote over who, over who basically makes the rules that you have to live by. Maybe what Faye said it best, one of, those in, one of those carries an inherently negative, an inherently negative penalty that is based around religious affiliation. Even mm -hmm. we were, the other one doesn't. Maybe it's a fine line. Maybe it's a fine line. But one of those fuck, is absolutely Fuck the religion worse. then. Fuck the religion then. Fuck that. Fuck, forget that, okay? Let's, let's, let's just say you like wearing a top hat. And it's like, take off the hot top hat, never wear the top hat again, and then you can vote.
a top because if you use that if you use that example vivian one of those has a religious connotation and the other does not i'm not okay, impinging fine. on another okay, so religion. That, we're in the middle of a debate okay, so right you, now you we're going to continue talking about trump that, after like, this you wouldn't say that like removing somebody's vote and uh, saying this they is can't a, have this they is can't a have a vote leftist stream, until they stop wearing not, not top for hats. biden or trump although like, that's i do not advocate voting for biden I don't love him. It's not discrimination based on race, religion, ethnic yeah. status, or any of the other protected channel, classes yeah. we have. If Sorry, a sovereign wait. nation decided Do you to be think authoritarianism means discriminating against a protected class? Because no, that's no, but that's that was like, the that's no, like but, bigotry. No, that's but not that authoritarianism. Was first, that was the first reference you used was Jews in Nazi Germany. Yeah, which I, said, I said ignore the, I said ignore the no, fucking religion wait, why are you stuff. Banning and them you just couldn't do that. Like so now I'm using Don't the example of somebody crazy. with a top hat, right? So, dude with a top hat really likes wearing top hats. He's worn top hats all his life. Okay, your civic nationalist state <laughs> comes into being, and they're like, "Thanks for the follow." Here's what we want you to do: we want you to take off the top hat. You stop wearing the top hat. That's it. You're going to stop wearing the top hat, and then you can have the right to vote. How is this not an authoritarian action? No, no, no. Listen, listen. I would view authoritarianism, and maybe incorrectly, but my personal view would be, you're going to take that fucking top hat off regardless, versus a choice. I think the choice good, is Aces. important. Maybe I am wrong in believing so. Well, no, because ultimately, any kind of demand from the state is not, you're going to take it off regardless. It's like, you're going to take it off or we're going to penalize you in some fashion. And in in some cases, right, it might be, well, you're fucking, you're, you're Jewish, you're black, oh, whatever, I'm right? Sorry, you go Ace. to a fucking concentration camp. Or it might be, you're, you're black, so you don't get a vote, Right. And you've or, shifted the line back, back to ethnic nationalism again. I am not advocating for any system that discriminates on religion, race, or any look, other. The, the, the whole point of this fucking conversation, dude, and I understand that it's really, really difficult to get your head around, but the reason that I'm using these comparisons, right, is because my proposition is that the only difference between civic nationalism and ethnic nationalism is that one focuses, right, on deference to the fucking state in service of culture and nation and one focuses on um fucking hell one focuses on um deference to the state in service of race religion whatever right like those those are the differences between like civic nationalism and ethno nationalism one's about ethnicity one's about nationality one I find moral, the other I don't find immoral. That's, okay. that's the best way I can break it down. These are both different kinds of fascism. You said that they weren't fascism but could lead to it. Vivian, that's unfair. I mean, okay. I mean, that's I mean you're, literally describing, you're literally describing an authoritarian system under which people who aren't of your, who aren't citizens have no, don't have the same rights as everybody else. Right? You're literally talking about creating an in-group based around your culture and nationality, right? And an out-group which doesn't have the same rights as everybody else. You were talking about, uh, you were talking earlier about the standards that people have to uphold in order to be a part of your society. You are literally talking about purity, right? The purity of the fucking Volk. The purity. No, of I think you are conflating a mad fucking amount over what I said. <laughs> like there's there's no moral claim there's no okay or, uh, well let's see so we can move on because i want i want us to make progress on this if possible it's, it's just banging my head against a brick wall well, at this point. i mean so we can I'm... agree that there's some level of of authoritarianism there is some level of of, of authority Authoritarianism that's involved in making a mandate that says this is what you must do to be considered a citizen and non-citizens no. are considered less than no. citizens so what no. about the other points we haven't, of fascism? we haven't agreed that we can't even agree that oh, okay. mama. i am slamming my head against a fucking brick wall here. i i sorry i thought that he had sort of disenfranchising people who who will not give their labor to the state is is authoritarian because in his eyes it is a choice that you make right you you either have rights uh, and and work for the state, or you don't have rights. 
it's that simple to him. No, that, so that even, is, that the right, right. even we have not, I have never said that an individual who did not do this would not have the right to a trial, would not have the right to speak, would not have the right to bear arms mm. or any other rights that we said. It is simply the I'm threshold glad you're drunk for now too, just the right to That's vote. It. Just, just it, the just right that. to vote, which is the which is the right that governs all those other rights, the right to have a say in how you are governed. Right, that that seems to me to be somewhat true, right? Because like, what's to stop if like, let's say that uh, you don't, you have a like a conscientious objection to working for the state. You think like, for whatever reason, there could be pre-existing reasons. If we're in the perfect world, maybe whatever. Maybe you just are anti-work, like myself, um, and you just think that work, like coercive work, is not a good thing. Um, so like, let's say that's the case. And that re that removes your ability to participate in the society. Well, what happens if that society decides to vote that anti-work people should be purged from the society? Oto Nawaji, Oto Nawaji already nailed it in chat when he said it was a strong democratic republic with a strong constitution. Similar to the protections that we have now, the constitution is the highest law of the land. Well, but if you, you don't have a say in the making of that constitution, is it not is it not very possible then that that the constitution could be weaponized by those who do have the right to, to, to vote against those who don't have the right to vote? Do you think, for instance, in America, we could vote to repeal the Eighth Amendment to allow torture? Probably. I mean, yeah. You can, we're, uh, we're, looking, legally, we're looking at a constitution. Right, right. Legally, the systems are there by which you could, in fact, do that. Yes. That is what this is a question. You can leave original BW. This is a question I wanted to ask Pisco because I wasn't sure. And this is a sidetrack. But do current, do new amendments, that, let's say we wanted to propose an amendment that everybody got a free pair of Crocs, something everybody is universally behind, would that have to pass a threshold of, would that have to pass a threshold? of constitutionality before it was applied to the constitution became an amendment or could we literally say anything and add it to the constitution you you can literally add anything to the constitution you could take the constitution you could rip it up and throw it away if you wanted to if you had enough support for it because people can vote for their representatives right and the representatives appoint judges and those judges decide <laughs> decide how to uh, how to implement amendments, and in an ideal system, their representatives would be working based on the wishes of the people. And if enough people wish for something, they can definitely place enough um, pressure on those representatives to like try and make them do it. Whereas if they have no voice, if they have no say, if they have no vote, then they can't. So then, do you see an issue with All democracy? Right, don't fucking if post conspiracy theory bullshit in my chat, bad please. Fucking outcomes. Democracy is not a perfect system. I'll, I'll ban you again. No if you're form of do democracy that. That's a warning. is even the kind of um, even the kind of direct democracy that I would prefer would likely have issues with yep, it. That's our choices. I can't been... think of a perfect system. Any utopia we think of, it's going to have fucking problems. All right. However, um, I do believe. That people ought to have a right to have a say in how they are governed. Oh, Trump! That's is that's an axiom that I can't fascism, really get past. Is, is essentially that I don't I think that people should that. have the right to infringe upon other people's autonomy without their without their consent. And usually, you, you know, we exist in collectives, and so it has to be a kind of collective consent. But ultimately, taking that away from a specific group of people because you don't like them or because they won't act in deference to you like that's really fucked up and it and it is authoritarian like whether you agree it's good or not it's it's authoritarian uh, I'm trying to find not necessarily a closing statement I quibble with the authoritarian statement. If somebody is using agency, there are kinks I have to work out with it that you were correct to point out. I still, something in it still resonates in me. Maybe that's because of my philosophical framework of moral duty. But I, I know maybe it's a meme. Maybe it's a meme, but that's the philosophical. Sorry, no, I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at gay fashion chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if I need to do more research or I need to have better, 
arguments against against your claims, then, then that's the work I got to do. Well, I mean, that's why we have these discussions, right? Is to identify, <laughs> you know, potential flaws in our viewpoints and and grow from them. Um, but thank you for clarifying that you don't believe I'm a fascist, but maybe perhaps just stupid. That no, I believe a, you're. I, I believe you're a, a better label. That is a better label to me. I'll gladly. No, I, I believe you're a fascist. Uh, you said I, I wasn't I, like three times. No, what no, I, I said, said you were. What I said. What I said very, very specifically was, I believe you when you say that you don't think you're a fascist. But that is because Ooh. you don't know what fascism means, just like you don't know what authoritarianism means. Mm. And that's fine. Everybody's got a lot to learn. Okay, it's very easy to get drawn down like shitty fucking paths, but I would encourage you to carefully analyze your positions and see if they infringe upon the liberty, the freedom of people, right, in, in, uh, in unjust and unfair and unnecessary ways. So I'm curious, between you and Demon, how did you arrive at different conclusions? Well, I think Demon Mama's just using a nicer turn of phrase for what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, okay, wait, wait. So, like, I, okay, so here's the thing. Yeah, it, it is kind of like, we have a different way of wording a similar position, which is that, like, um, I don't think, like, I think that you're being honest in saying that you don't, like, view yourself as a fascist and that you don't really agree with a fascist society. But I don't think that you, like, have like analyzed your own civic nationalist um position enough to the position where you where you realize that it's almost if not basically exactly fascism and like i don't see much of a distinction like this is my personal opinion i don't see much of a distinction between a fascist society and this purported like imagined civic nationalist society in fact it t seems to me like um a fascist society could be filed under your current definition of what a civic nationalist society is um but and and as a result of that like again while i believe you and i think you're being honest in saying that you don't like agree with the outcome of a fascist society i think that would prompt that should prompt you to perhaps look at what the outcomes of such a of a so-called civic nationalist society could be and how those could be very similar to the undesired outcome of a fascist society I view civic nationalism as an outgrowth of liberalism. It was probably one of the main drivers of the Enlightenment, that the nation that the nation was a more complete example of the polity rather than rather than ethnicity or rather than religious affiliation or rather than membership in the family of the king. Civic nationalism is just an outgrowth of liberalism. That the standards of the standards of, you know, fucking liberty, equality, freedom of speech, religion, press, that those are the standards by one must act in to be a member of the polity. It's sometimes even called liberal nationalism. I mean, and I would argue that, like, there's a inherent problem in both liberalism and in perhaps, um, you know, this liberal nationalism, um, awesome. which is that um, if you begin to remove the rights of universal universal like suffrage of the ability for people to vote and participate in the society that they're taking part in um you start to run into some pretty big issues with how to legitimize um any sort of governance um, it's not very liberal is it yeah it's not very liberal I like, that's the thing. this is a paradox of tolerance argument right because what if somebody I seeks to join your polity that is anti-free speech that is anti-freedom of religion that is anti-anything this is the this is Popper's paradox of tolerance that we all see. Up except there. though, except though that like those people do exist. Um, they exist right now, and I wouldn't argue for them to be disenfranchised. Um, I would seek to combat their ideas using the other liberal, uh, the other like uh, liberties that we are granted under such a society. But the problem is, is when you start cutting people out of the ability to have any say in the govern government that they're participating in even if you draw that lines on civil whether you draw that on like some sort of civil line where you say okay well here's all the hoops you have to jump through in order to prove the state that you're actually willing to be a part of it to me that just seems like finding a way to cut people who are not loyal to the state out um not loyal to the state not loyal to the mechanism of 
of the state. Well, but, but that's what it becomes demonst- functionally, though. Demonstrating right? some level of service to the poly. Why do you like this do- original BW? Oh, good grief. I wish you'd stop, like, substituting polity for state. Well, I, I just don't the, know how the de- how you determine the difference between that because if, the, I, if I, oh I'm sorry for cutting you off oh no it's just because it's like at the end of the day it's the state however that state organizes things that's going to determine your right to vote and if the state can determine your right to vote I mean functionally that's true in basically all state societies because they have the military they can literally just say you don't get to vote and that you can't do anything about it but obviously we're working for like a more ideal society so i would argue that the right to vote should be like the right to participate in civil society should be uh, non-negotiable it should be something that's granted to all beings no matter what even if you don't agree with them or like them and then you build from there other other such liberties because here's the thing like it's a fact of reality that we don't have a choice that we're born on earth we don't have any choice in that matter um so all beings are sort of uh, by nature like by the coercion of nature forced to participate in some form of society um that we don't have any say over that so therefore we should build a system that keeps that in mind and says well hey like um if we want a just society well these people were born here you can't choose which country you end up born in you can't choose which state you end up born in or city or whatever you only can you know hope that you land in a city that grants you the right to have some say in that so i would say that that should be our fundamental principle right that we shouldn't seek to disenfranchise anyone even if they don't want to work one sec to answer chat no like all of you have brought up is the work paid or unpaid in this hypothetical you'd be fucking paid it, you'd be paid. This isn't slave labor. You'd get a wage. It might even be like government prevailing wage fucking shit. You'd get paid. This wouldn't be slavery. You wouldn't be breaking fucking rocks. But, um... Well, you might I, be breaking rocks. Well, maybe you'd be you breaking rocks. to break rocks so that you can vote. <laughs> I guess, I, I guess if I have to make any kind of, like, fucking closing statement, it would just be that, like, coercion is coercion. Coercion is authoritarian. It's inherently co-authoritarian when it comes from above, when it comes from the state. If the state's telling you what you can and can't fucking do, right, and you have no say in what those rules are that govern you, that is authoritarianism. And I I, I, I hope that Agreed. at least the majority of chat agrees with me on that fucking point, because otherwise we're, we're, we're lost. <laughs> Amazing. <right? laughs> I'm just, no, like, no, no. Uh, fuck it. I, I didn't expect any. I I think I have one, two sympathizers in chat, but is the only member of the proud Chud tag as a lib. When a lib gets the Chud tag, uh, I didn't expect to win very many over. Um, well, you're not a lib. That's, technically, I am. That's quite, that's quite obvious, by the way, that you side with authoritarianism, which is like, you know, pretty fucking antithetical to liberalism. I am, I am a lib. <laughs> All right, all right. Listen, now this is going beyond. So now we're going to get into like our libs fascist territory. No, nah, nah, we can't do I mean, it. You know, libs, liberals are like neocons, neocons, aren't they? Especially in the United States. But this chap, when he says liberal, what he means is, oh man, I ain't got no problem with gay people. Let them, let them kiss. True. Yeah, and that's not what fucking liberalism is. That's just progressive social policy, you twonk. Like, learn what these fucking words mean. Anyway, I'm done. Have a good night. <laughs> right. You're heading out now, Viv. Thanks for coming on. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Is a twonk like a thick twink? Um, I... I don't know. I think... Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that one, actually. I think it is. I think that's what a twonk is supposed to be. All right. Could be true. Be that true. was an interesting conversation, Peacecraft. Oh, shit. I just opened a million Discord windows. I didn't mean to do that. Um, this was an interesting discussion. Um, I'm glad we got to have it. I I, I have some, you know, I, I have a lot of uh, things where I, I disagree with your analysis, but I, I think this was revealing in a lot of ways. And I hope it was um, beneficial, like, for you as well. Uh, and uh, I appreciate you coming on and, and being willing to talk about your ideas, even if I disagree with you strongly on oh, a lot I don't, of things. I don't get upset. I think the only dude that was kind of triggering was Mitt Nerd, but eh, you're not going to win them all. No, no I, just remember, I, when you're on stream, just focus on the combos on stream. Don't worry about chat. 
That's chat. Chat is having their own conversations. No, but I, I've, I agree with others that have talked in political channels that state sovereignty is important. I don't see it as immoral or unethical uh, that the, that a sovereign state would set uh, barriers for its enfranchisement. In my super mythological one, uh, that might be tied to suffrage, but I am fully well aware that that is not going to happen. Um, I do not I do not take that framework to believe that others should be abused. I believe in a strong constitution mm. that Oto, Oto Nawaji pointed out. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not saying that we need to fucking restart the red flags and zeppelins. Um, it's just political philosophy I personally enjoy. And it probably stems from my philosophical view of moral duty and mm. moral duty to your community and the polity that I think is probably a good way to live. Oh, I'm but. sure there will be more um, more opportunities for us to uh, banter back and forth on various details. But again, my my main thing um, in this very long, we had like a two hour conversation, which is actually really great. But um, in our very long conversation, you know, obviously the points still stand from the first one in which I would urge uh, further inspection of those equivalencies that are drawn. But also, um, you know, after hearing this, I would say that I think where uh, your viewpoint could 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 improve some in its own internal consistency is um, analyzing the extents to which authoritarianism can self perpetuate. Um, that um, it may only you may only be removing like the vote from someone in the first like for whatever thing that seems acceptable now, but that slowly and surely those parameters can change and they can be weaponized by people who don't share your values for a society. And that is something that we have to consider is how easily co-optable our societies are. Um, and to me, there's not, there's not, at least in this conversation, I don't know that I saw all that many different structural differences between a civic, uh, an ultra nationalist society, um, that isn't fascist and an ultra nationalist society that is fascist. That's, that's my one thing is I, I think that there is probably some more work to be done in, in drilling down on those. Fair. Specifics. fair. Uh, the only critique I have that before I peace out and get a chat schlacking is uh, I do. Def I define one as authoritarianism without choice. I define one as inherently militaristic and expansionistic versus one is probably more nationalist, not a, not nationalistic, but a, a slight bit amount of more withdrawn mm. uh, one of those is the precursor to imperialism where they do not respect the sovereignty of others which yeah. i do respect the sovereignty of others um yeah yeah i mean the imperialism thing is a whole is a very complicated other discussion we could discuss because i would say that like there is a practical issue in um the sort of consolidation of a of a civic nationalist state that involves like, well, what happens about the people who are already there? Like when you make the switch to the society, what happens to the people who are there? Like indigenous people, for example, how do you handle that without um, being imperialist? But I will say that I am, I am relieved to hear that you are no, no supporter of, of imperialism or expansionism. Um, but yeah. So anyway, good conversation. Um, thank you for coming on. You debated in front of like a hundred people. And I think that's pretty cool to be willing to, uh, have the spine to defend your positions on air, even if I don't agree with you on everything. So I appreciate it. As, as long as I get that check for my labor, uh, just make sure that one's, that one's in the mail. For that yeah. Sweet, you, sweet you, I'll, give you, I'll give you, I'll give you 10%. I'll give you 10% of whatever I've made during this stream time, which as of right now is one cent so <laughs> i'll send you a check for a tenth of a penny <laughs> okie dokie artichokey i'll go back to listening and non-pissing people off all right and have a good rest of your night bye bye for now peacecraft all right that was